In the next session, legislators from rural districts will comprise more than 60% of the Republican majority in the House and the Senate. Joining me in the studio to talk about this and other House GOP priorities for the 2017 legislative session is Speaker Kurt Doubt. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. The Senate GOP has said that their priorities are health care, roads and bridges, and tax relief. What are the House GOP priorities? You know, I, I think ours would probably be similar. I would say it's health care, health care, and health care. Um, you know, I think as we just came through this election, the, the number one issue obviously was uh, Minsure, the problems that folks are having with that, the effects of the Affordable Care Act. Um, I think it's incumbent on us to uh, work with the administration to find a solution to help those folks out. And um, we think that probably means uh, dismantling uh, our, our, our Minsure here in Minnesota and, and moving people back to a, a, a more market-driven system like we had before, which was much more stable. Um, but uh, obviously we're going to have a good debate about that during the legislative mm -hmm. session. That's our number one priority, and it has to be. Uh, folks that are affected by that are really hurting. Um, beyond that, it's uh, job creation and economic growth. We want to focus on those things. And, and you know, particularly, I know you're going to uh, want to talk a little bit about the, the, the metro-rural uh, divide, mm -hmm. but uh, particularly out in greater Minnesota, uh, we'd like to focus on what we can do to make Minnesota more competitive to grow jobs out in uh, greater Minnesota. Um, also, uh, you know, I think um, we want to work on, on some tax relief. I think we're going to have to wait and see a little bit what happens with uh, the forecast, both uh, the December forecast and the, the February mm -hmm. forecast. Mm -hmm. And once we see those, we'll know a little bit more. Okay. And as you mentioned, there, a lot has been made from this election of the a national debate between the rural and the metro areas. And you do have a majority of rural representatives. So... What, what specifically do you have in mind for that group of people? Well, two, two years ago when we took the majority in the Minnesota House, uh, we felt that Democrats prior to that, and that was, th th when we took control two years ago, it put an end to complete Democrat control for, for a two-year period. Mm -hmm. So uh, we felt that Democrats had kind of, kind of left Greater Minnesota behind. Um, when I talk to folks out in Greater Minnesota, we, we know that they don't feel like they've fully recovered from the from the recession and that the economic recovery has not been uh, as robust as it has been in the metro area. And I'm not sure that folks in the metro area are even fully feeling like they're back to where they were prior to the recession, uh, but, it's, but it's much worse in greater Minnesota. So we want to focus on those things. We want to figure out why uh, we're not starting new businesses uh, out in greater Minnesota, which would create new jobs, why Minnesota businesses are expanding in other states instead of expanding here in Minnesota. Um, those, those are simple things that, that I think we can probably take a look at, um, which will help. Obviously, that's going to take some time um, to get that sort of economic growth, but we need to make Minnesota more competitive uh, for those kinds of jobs. And, and when the economy is growing and we're creating more jobs, that it, it creates a, a draw for people uh, that, that can move up into, into better paying jobs and better paying job opportunities. And frankly, that helps everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a, a big goal for us with Greater Minnesota. And so what about the metro area? I mean, your job as speaker is to balance the interests of the entire state. So what are your metro and suburban representatives sure. looking for? Well, and, and, and we're excited. I think when we took the majority two years ago, we won 11 seats at that time. Ten of those 11 were in greater Minnesota, and folks said, oh, this is going to be the Republican, you know, greater Minnesota majority. And, mm -hmm. and at the time, we said, we want to focus on all of Minnesota, because we felt like greater Minnesota got left behind, but we also don't want to forget about the metro area. Uh, we think there's a lot of things that, that, that we can do. We're excited that we won four seats this time in, in the metro area, and, and we showed that we're not just a party of greater Minnesota, we're a party that's, uh, that's statewide. And, and uh, you know, the transportation issue uh, that's going to be important again during this, the legislative session affects both the metro area and greater right. Minnesota. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Democrats pushed transit really hard in the metro area. Uh, we feel that uh, there's a, a big need to put money into roads and bridges first before we do the transit. And the transit, if we do it, needs to make sense. It needs to really demonstrate that it's going to reduce traffic on the roads or or, or be in the right place that's going to move people effectively and efficiently. And um, we have some real concerns about the Southwest Light Rail. I'm sure we're going to talk about that during the session. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to focus on things that will be good for all of Minnesota, uh, things like roads and bridges. As you know, in the last legislative session, our governor is, is a Democrat, and the Senate was democratically controlled. Mm -hmm. And now that has changed. The House, will, or the, I'm sorry, the Senate will have a 
Republican majority, yeah. but a slim majority. So how is that going to work? Well, we've actually grown our majority in the House, uh, which is a, a comfortable thing for us. We picked up an, a net pickup of, of four seats. Uh, there's still one open seat um, that, that will be filled in a February special election, which is in a fairly Republican district, so we feel confident we uh, should be able to win that. If we do, we'll have 77 uh, members. 68 is the majority, so that gives us a comfortable margin. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be good in that we won't have, and, and Senator Bach is a good friend of mine, but uh, he is uh, a little old-fashioned in his politics, and, and you know he sometimes will wait you out until the very end of session, hoping that that will uh, move you off of your position or move you towards his position. Well, that didn't always work with me, and, and uh, it wasn't an effective way, and I don't think it served Minnesotans well. So my hope is by having a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we can get our work done earlier, we can agree uh, earlier and get some bills on the governor's desk in time to have a, a debate, a full debate uh, in, in, in public so people can participate in that. The speculation, though, is that it might be contentious. What do you think? Well, you know, it, it, it certainly could be. Um, the interesting mechanic of what's going to happen in the Senate is with just a one-seat majority, they're going to need every, if, if they pass things that are that are not bipartisan, they're going to need every member of their caucus to vote for every bill every mm -hmm. time, which um, almost never happens in right. St. Paul, regardless of who's in control. So um, most, and I think that's maybe what people don't always understand about what we do. Most of what we do is bipartisan. Mm -hmm. uh, the media, of course, always likes to report when we disagree or when we when we fight because that makes for a better story but most of what we do is bipartisan and I think this will actually uh, probably be a catalyst to us wanting our bills to be very bipartisan so hopefully it'll give us uh, good consensus legislation um, that that also the governor can agree with one thing that I want to make sure that the administration understands is I've had a frustration that the governor doesn't always fully participate in the legislative session mm -hmm. and sometimes doesn't get involved until the last couple of weeks um, we want we want to make sure that his commissioners are uh, authorized to, to participate and negotiate in the hearings we want decisions to be made during our public hearings in, in the committee process um, and we want his commissioners and the administration to be involved in that process so we can have it happen in, a, in an open transparent place and um, so we want them to be engaged from the very beginning of session and, and participate fully uh, through the committee process as well. So you've completed your first term as speaker you're about to start your second <laughs> term as speaker yep. what lessons have you learned? Well, um, it, it's interesting. I think, uh, actually, I, looking back, I, I don't feel like I did a, 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 a too bad a job. I think it was a pretty successful uh, first couple of years, and I think that's why we probably not only retained the majority, but picked up some seats in a year, a presidential year, mm -hmm. when I think folks would have expected we would lose seats and maybe even lose the majority. Um, so I think that, that speaks well of the way I have tried to connect with people and talk with people. Um, you know, I think we probably can do a better job getting work done earlier in the session, and that's why I want to engage the governor mm -hmm. earlier in the session and make sure that people understand that, that I think and, and we all think that that serves Minnesotans better if we can do our work uh, in the committee process, in public, in a transparent place, and have the, the administration fully actively participating there. Um, so I think I want to move things up and, and try to make sure that we're not cramming things into the end of session. Mm -hmm. It just, I think it's become such a, a, a natural thing around here that things get jammed into almost the end of session. Almost an expectation, really. It, it, it really yeah. almost is. And I, yeah. I, I, I agree with everybody that says that we can do better. Um, and we can do better. So it's going to be a big priority of mine uh, to do that. Now, I still think we did a pretty good job over the last couple of years. And I think the voters agreed with us. Mm -hmm. um, but I think uh, we owe it to them to, to really be responsible and, and work with the governor. We obviously still have divided government, so right. we have to work with the governor uh, to accomplish a budget this year and, and, and next year, uh, hopefully a bonding bill. And, and I look forward to a, a successful uh, next two years. Speaker Dodd, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. Thanks for having me.